The Indiana Pacers these days, well, it's not that great. The Pacers in the offseason traded Paul George for Victor Oladipo and DeMontis Sabonis. This trade wasn't as bad as people made it seem, but it was not great. Then in the offseason, the Pacers signed a bunch of older role players and got some players who know how to win, which may sound like a good thing, but it really isn't because the Pacers are now a little too good for their own good. I wouldn't be surprised if the Pacers get like the 10th seed, which means that they won't get a top five pick and therefore their future is really questionable. They do have an exciting young center in Miles Turner, who I'm a huge fan of, but the Pacers are really not looking that good. The Pacers were not always this hopeless though. In fact, the Indiana Pacers were a serious thorn in the side of the Miami Heat's big three coming close to beating the Heat a few times. The team consisted of Paul George, Roy Hibbert, George Hill, David West, and Lance Stevenson. This team was a huge threat to the Miami Heat, a team led by LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. But what if I told you that this team could have been way better? What if I told you that the Indiana Pacers could have went up against the Miami Heat with the starting lineup of Drew Holiday, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, David West, and Roy Hibbert? Let's take this back to the 2009 NBA Draft, where the Indiana Pacers had the 13th pick in the draft. And they really needed a point guard, so who did they draft? Tyler Hansbrough, aka Crazy T. Tyler was a power forward, and was considered to be a player who wouldn't improve all that much in the league. He spent four years in college, was undersized at the four spot, had no jump shot, and he wasn't even that skilled to begin with. But the Pacers took Hansbro and they drafted Crazy T over point guards Drew Holiday and Jeff Teague. Holiday and Teague have both been all-stars in their careers. Now, as a single mistake, this doesn't look that awful. They took a bust over two solid point guards, but when just looking at this move by itself, it doesn't look that bad. But that perception disappears when you look at the 2011 NBA Draft, where the Indiana Pacers took Kawhi Leonard with the 15th pick. This is all good, but the Pacers were still desperate for a good point guard, so when the San Antonio Spurs decided to offer the Pacers George Hill, a young point guard who had shown a lot of promise, in exchange for Kawhi Leonard, the Pacers took that deal because they needed a point guard desperately. So the Pacers moved Kawhi Leonard, a player who would become a superstar two-way player, for George Hill, a very solid role player at point to be fair, but still, a superstar for a role player is never a good deal. But had the Pacers drafted Drew Holiday instead of Tyler Hansbrough, they wouldn't have needed a point guard, so therefore they wouldn't have traded Kawhi Leonard. So they could have had Drew Holiday and Kawhi Leonard instead of just George Hill. In the 2014 Conference Finals, the Indiana Pacers lost in six games to the Miami Heat. The Heat then went on to lose in the finals, with Kawhi Leonard winning finals MVP. The two players who really gave LeBron and the Heat trouble that year were Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Those two could have been on the same team. Drew Holiday was an injury prone player, yes, but Drew was really the best or second best player on his team in Philly for most of his career. Being the main ball handler and distributor. That puts a lot of pressure on a player, and in Indiana, with Paul George there, he probably would have had the same role that George Hill did. He'd essentially have been a 3 and D player, and who's to say that Drew Holiday under those new circumstances would be injured come playoff time. And even if he is, Kawhi Leonard alone with Paul George would have beat the Heat. LeBron struggled with Kawhi's defense. Now just imagine the Pacers throwing a double team at him with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. That would be a nightmare for the Miami Heat. And had they gone to the playoffs, I think the Spurs could have still made the finals without Kawhi Leonard because Kawhi only averaged 11 points in the conference finals versus the Thunder, and KD still averaged 26 points on solid field goal percentages even though he was being guarded by Kawhi. And pretty much every game in this series was a blowout. So the Spurs would still make the finals, and I think that the Pacers would win this series. Also, keep in mind that Lance Stevenson would have been the sixth man of the team as well, giving the Pacers more depth. 
And even if Kawhi didn't result in a championship in 2014, the Pacers would have still been contenders for years and contenders to this day. Kawhi, in my opinion, is now the second best player in the league, and Paul George is still top 15. So the Pacers messed up, and now the Pacers are led by Victor Oladipo, someone that I will be talking about very soon. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the outro music.